another GCSE economics video with me, Mr. Goff, for MrGoff.com. This video will focus on the distribution of wealth. Wealth in the UK is very unequally distributed, even more so than income. As you can see from this chart here, the top 10% of wealth holders in the UK hold over 48.5% of all wealth. Meanwhile, the bottom 30% of wealth holders hold only just over 1% of wealth between them. There are a number of factors that contribute to the unequal distribution of wealth in the UK. We're going to take a look at each of these in more detail now. The first of these is inheritance. This is where someone passes on their property, normally to other family members, when they die. They do this by writing a will and saying who should get what amongst their property. Some people will have a lot of wealth to pass on, as we've seen in the previous image, where we saw the unequal distribution of wealth, and others will have virtually no wealth to pass on. So inheritance perpetuates the distribution of wealth problems that we already have. The next of these is savings. It's fairly straightforward that the more you earn, the more you're likely to be able to save. People on low incomes and benefits may well find that by the time they've paid for all their essentials, they have nothing left to save. When it comes to people who have disposable income, that is some money left over after they've paid for their essentials, their saving and spending preferences will affect how much wealth they're able to acquire. Some people will spend all of their money on consumable goods and have a really good time but have nothing left to show for it. Others might save up and spend on assets that they're going to have for the future. Some may even take their savings and invest them into a business. If this business turns out to be profitable, then they'll have an even higher income and higher wealth in the future. Those people that own more than one property are able to act as a landlord and make money by renting them out. As well as earning rent from these properties, the value of these properties also tends to increase over time, also increasing the wealth of people who hold property. Meanwhile, those people that can't even afford their own property are paying rent but getting no asset in return. While most people will not own any, some people will own shares. Shares provide people with a stake in the ownership of a public company. Shares can go both up and down in value based on how well firms do. If a firm does particularly well, they may choose to use some of their profits to pay dividends, which is a payment made to shareholders from their profits. That brings us to the end of this look at the distribution of wealth. Join me again next time when I'll be looking at the consequences of the unequal distribution of wealth and income. Try the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics. And until next time, it's bye for now.